today what I did was um, I, I posted a um, a GU setup. It was a it was a really clean setup. It had um, pretty insane risk to reward. I think it was right around one to fifteen risk to reward. Um, and that was probably for like 70 pips, roughly 70, 80 pips. Um, I think it ended up doing maybe like close to 20 to the, the higher, the point of interest. But um, it was a setup that I missed. It happened right with the GBP news today. Um, so after I posted that, I got a lot of messages. I got a lot of messages and a lot of comments. Um, a lot of people asking different questions about it. A lot of people asking, you know, how were you able to spot that? Um, it was on the 10, 15 minute time frame, or people were asking, you know, was it the 15 minute time frame? And I said, no, this was the snapshot that I sent was on the 10 minute. And they were asking, you know, why, why did you land on the 10 minute? Um, you know, so we can go through that. We can go through how I found the setup. We can run through all the, the different things that I was looking for that I identified, um, kind of my, my weekly and daily, you know, directional bias, if you will. And then what I'm anticipating, um, you know, for further price action for GU, where I can see it or anticipate it going longer term, um, especially as we're coming into tomorrow. Tomorrow is our, um, the first Friday of the new month. So that means NFP. And that's a, a red folder news event that happens at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, first Friday of every month. Um, it's typically known as an event that can bring a lot of volatility into the market. So we can usually see what usually happens. And, and this is kind of a pattern that I've, I've recognized over the years. Um, you'll usually see one of two things happen with NFP week. So one is you'll see crazy movement on Thursday and nothing on Friday, right? We had a lot of crazy movement today, a lot of pretty significant impulsive moves today. Um, I saw a lot of manipulation today. Or you will see a relatively slow week. You'll see a slow Thursday, despite a lot of red folder, orange folder news. And then you'll see almost parabolic-like moves on Friday. And sometimes you'll even see... The moves that we saw today on a Thursday and on Friday for NFP. So we had some movement today. Um, it's just a matter of what sets up and what we have developing for the rest of New York into Asian, kind of setting up to see what we have, if we have any Asian impulsive moves, any, any manipulation through Asian or London, kind of leading up for that overlap as this event's 30 minutes into the New York session 30 minutes into the overlap. So there are very specific patterns. There are very specific characteristics of NFP week and patterns leading up to the actual event. So that's what we can talk about today. We can break that down, um, kind of review that GU and again, what I'm anticipating for the rest of the week. So if that sounds good. Drop some fire emojis in the chat. Again, we don't have many people on this call. Most are probably catching the replay just because um, the scheduling kind of was crazy this week. This isn't normally when we do these calls. So um, I know probably a lot of people aren't even aware that we're live right now. So um, let's see. So we got about 21-ish. So we, we got some people hopping on. So we're getting there. We're getting there. So I locate the media at the top and it puts in date order. So yeah, so that's another way you can do it too. Um, as Lee pointed out, you can go to the top of the Facebook group and you can go to the media section and that will show you different um, files or different, uh, it has like albums and it has also different like videos. So it kind of organizes things that that's definitely a way that you can do it too. All right. So um, one of the cool things that, that I saw or, or I, I noticed today after I posted that GU, I'm going to share my screen in just one second. Um, I'm just struggling to move things around as my monitors. I got some monitors that are down right now. Um, one of the things that I noticed though, after posting that GU was there was quite a few people that either one also identified that setup or something similar, right? Have the same bias, same points of interest for entries and targets. Um, and then there was a lot of people that actually caught the trade. So that that's really exciting to see, right? Especially, you know, when you, when you see somebody that you're learning from post something that, you know, you were looking at, looking at and, and perhaps even traded before even realizing that, you know, I was doing it as well, or somebody that you're following was doing it as well. So um, it was really good to see that. It was really good to see that. Hi, Danny. Good to see you. Been away. Scott, what's going on, man? Hope all is well. 
All right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to share my screen and we can run through that, um, that GU price action, and then we can look at what we're anticipating for the rest of the week leading up to NFP for tomorrow. So um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow's NFP news event. So let me share my screen now. Um, I'm going to have to share my screen on the laptop because my monitors are kind of all out of whack right now. So let me do this. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to do a, um, what we'll do, I'll look at the, I'll pull up the setup, and then what we can do is we can, I'll clear this, and then I will first show you the setup that, um, that I posted today in the group, um, and this is the one that I, that I missed, and then we can zoom out a bit hit the higher time frames and run through all the price action and what we can anticipate for the rest of the week. Um, let me, let me see something real quick. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can, let me see if it's better up here. All right. So I'm going to switch screens. I'm going to switch screens. I'm going to use one of the top. Give me one second. The laptop is just a little small. So I'm gonna use one of my bigger monitors. All right, let me know if you guys can see my screen. You can see this GU. We should be all set now. All right. And I apologize, you might hear Emma, she's in the background coughing up a storm and crying right now, so. All right, so let's run it. So there were a couple things that I was looking at today. Um, and it might even make sense for me to kind of do um, a top-down first. What do you guys think? You guys want me to focus on the pattern first or do the top-down leading up to the pattern? It might be better to do the top-down first. It might be better to do the top-down first. And, and I won't go too heavy into it. I won't go too heavy into it. So um, looking at a daily time frame, and, and I'm sure most people can recognize what's happening here. So just recently, we had a pretty significant run to the downside. And, and that's what I'm talking about here. We had this pretty significant run to the downside. So this is the daily. So if you look on a daily, weekly time frame, that's what we're going to see right now. We're going to see a lot of lower highs, here, we're going to see a lot of lower lows, right? So we have this move here, right? And you can see we had some manipulation here. Um, you'll probably see it better on a lower time frame, but we can see we had some equal highs here, um, relative equal highs if you extend it here. And we saw a price push up here. We had a nice manipulation candle afterwards. What happened after? We saw a price start to run to the downside and start attacking these lows here ultimately giving a nice continuation push, cementing that lower low. From there, we saw price give a retracement, rebalancing this impulsive price action, trading all the way back up into this. And I believe it was like an eight hour candle. We can hop down and, and take a look. Let me get this off here. So here was that candle here, right? You can, and I'll zoom in a bit and you can see that manipulation candle, right? So you can see how it, ran above these highs and then just aggressively reversed and sank and ran on these lows down here. Right, that, that was the target down here, ran on those lows. So we saw price run on these highs here and then ran on these lows here. And I'll even mark up these highs here, right? So we had those relative equal highs. That was our manipulation point of interest. And I'll go back to the daily and we can draw some fibs on there, right? From our swing high manipulation down to our swing low here. Let me get that out of the way. So what we saw was price give us a nice retracement back up into our kill zone, into this manipulation candle before that continuation down running on this low, right? So now we have this low here. We saw price run on this high, run on this low here, 
give a retracement back up into that point of interest, run on those lows, and then run on these lows. So what we basically have here is almost very similar to what we just saw. Now we have a new swing and we're trading internally right now. So now what we can do is we're looking at this swing here, swing high and swing low, right? So we have a lower high here and a lower low here. And what we can do now is we can take our fibs from this swing high and this swing low, and we can see what took place, right? We can see price came back, rebalanced, ran on these highs here, these short-term highs here, one, two, three, trading back up into this point of interest here inside our kill zone before breaking down, right? So right now, given what we're seeing here, what is your directional bias? If you had to look at this and you had to mark it up based on what I just discussed, what would be your directional bias? What would be your directional bias? Directional bias, what I mean by that is where would you anticipate price to go from this information, this current information that we're seeing with price doing what it is doing now. So Rich says bearish. Yes, I agree with that, right? So what's happening here? We're trading internally. When I say in trading internally, right? We're trading within... We're not expanding. We're in retracement. We're, we're trading between the lower high, or excuse me, the lower, yeah, the lower high and the lower low, right? So that's what I mean by we have a bunch of internal structures. So we have our big target down here. We have equal lows down here. And we can drag that over and we can, we kind of have like a break retest level here. So we saw a price give a nice push down. If I go to a time frame lower, if I go to a line chart, you can see this was our retracement structure here. This was our retracement structure. You can see internal structure. Now it's showing higher lows, right? Pulled up into the kill zone and we can see price pushed down and broke structure. So with that being said, right, I'm going to go down to a four hour. Now, if we're looking at a four hour, do you see any points of interest that you might want to pay attention to? Without me saying it, what are some points of interest that you would pay attention to, right? If we've determined that this is bearish, if we determine that the retracement has broken structure and that this could be queuing continuation running on lows, right? So we would have a short-term low here, right? Another break retest level, right? Resistance, support, support, right? So here's our short-term target. Our short-term and long-term targets in alignment, they are. We can see equal lows here. Long-term target, short-term target, right? So do we see any points of interest that we could use for continuation moves? Price about to attack a swing low. We're still bearish, bearish. So it looks like we're in agreement there. And maybe I need to switch time frames, right? You tell me, what do we see here? Do you see any points of interest? And then I'll get into the setup that I posted in the FTME group today. And you can take a look at that um and, and i'll break that down but what do we see for points of interest here does anybody see any points of interest that the wick so i'm assuming you're talking about um this here this here so why is that important lee why is this wick important So why is this, why is this important, Lee? What, what makes this significant? Why did you point out this wick? Liquidity graph, right? 100%. Manipulationary. So if the four hours looking like this, what do we do, right? What do we do if the candle is looking like this, right? We're on a four hour time frame. I'll zoom in, right? So what every, what we're, they're talking about, if you're not sure, we can see that we had some highs here, and we had some lows here. Look what happened before the big move. And this is something, regardless of your experience with these concepts or regardless of your experience trading, period, when you go look at big runs in the market, right, significant moves, right, even the move that I posted today, right, this one here, 
Look what happened before the move, right? We saw a price spike down and take lows, right? Look at this big move here. What happened before it happened? Price spiked up above these highs, capturing liquidity, running on stops where, you know, a bunch of liquidity was building, right? So that's a, a key point of interest, right? So as Lee pointed out, he said the wick. So what can we do there? What can we do there? If that's looking like a wick, what can we do there? to get a better idea of what's going on. Go lower time frame, right? So let me put this here in the center. We also have this low taken. We'll do that and we'll put an X on that. So the X's, if you're not familiar with my markups and how I mark up the charts, the X's are just basically um, painting a clearer picture for me. So when I go to a chart, I can see um, easily find areas. So what this X means is that, you know, for example, I would have had a dollar sign here, meaning that there was liquidity sitting here and X signals to me that um, price ran on those highs or ran on those lows, liquidity was captured. So right now, what we're seeing is price work itself back up. We saw price run on these highs here. We can also throw an X there. And we're coming into a point of interest. So we can drop a time frame lower, as Lee said, right? Now, when we go lower, we have the candle pattern. That's what you want to see, right? So when you see a bunch of wick and it's kind of like flipping through a catalog to see a pattern that is just clear. And, and when I talk about the pattern, right, we're talking about this candle, full body candle pushing up above the highs. And then the next candle, what I like to see is a, a strong bearish engulfing candle. So like this, strong up candle, down candle, right? Less wick. So what we can do now is we can mark up this two hour candle here. I'm going to make this red um, selling and I'm going to label this two hour just so we know it's the two hour. Okay. So you can see we're just about there. And what we can look for for tomorrow is Maybe we will get some type of pattern coming into Asian, right? Maybe we'll get something like this and then London happens, right? And we see a nice push up running on previous day high, respecting the two hour candle and then a nice breakdown. And then we might get a nice retracement leading up to the event and we'll have a nice bearish signature. That would be ideal, right? And then we can start running on lows right? Short-term lows that are in alignment with the big low down here. And that would just, that would, uh, an opportunity like this, it's not only going to give you a really good risk to reward, it's going to give you a directional bias for like the next week, maybe two weeks. And then it's also going to give you options. It's going to give you options. Maybe you can start, um, you know, options for stacking positions, options for twin trading, right? There's going to be a lot of different options when you have a potential point of interest like this, that could lead to something significant, right? Even if we're talking straight up two hour candle, right? This two hour candle, and if you're on the live calls for EFXU last Friday, this has been a point of interest for quite some time. Even that right there, that's a almost 19 to one, right? So that's gonna take some time there. So you're gonna be able to get other positions. You're gonna be able to stack. You're gonna be able to twin trade. You're gonna be able to get in and out, in and out. There's gonna be a lot of, moves but more importantly we have points of interest and we have longer term targets in alignment with our short term targets so that's like that's one of the key things there all right so that brings us to the price action for this week okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to flip this on and now you can see what's taking place so what we're seeing here in between these yellow lines any indicator that i use it's all based around time right Price by itself is irrelevant. When you couple it with time, then that's the true indicator, right? We're not talking RSIs. We're not talking MACDs. We're not talking lagging indicators that um, paint or repaint based on price itself, right? So price is always going to be the true indicator. But what we can do is couple that with time and it becomes extremely, extremely powerful. And that had a lot to do with this target right? Previous week high. What do we have here? If price starts to break down, what do we have for the next target? We've swiped previous week high. What's left? 
hello, previous week low, huge target. And then the big low at the bottom, December low. What would that be? Low of 2021, right? Huge. So two big targets there. And then we're also going to have previous day low, which we can turn on with the session. So the sessions, this is very similar to these yellow lines where it's painting these green, white, and red lines, which basically just tell me when Asian session is starting and ending. When is London session? So when we come into green, that's London. When we come into this overlap of this maroonish color, that's telling me that this is the London and New York overlap. And then red is just the overlap or excuse me, just the New York session. And that's significant because that's when you're going to see moves in most cases, right? And, and it might be a little different pair to pair, right? If you're looking at like a, like a Euro odd that is correlated with, you know, an odd, right? Um, you know, something like that, or like a JPY pair, then you might see some moves happen, impulsive moves happen during, Asian session, but typically, especially a major like Great Britain USD, you're going to see the most amount of volume come in during London. And then even more so when New York and London session, the two biggest sessions are overlapping, right? So that's when we can look for those strong impulsive moves, right? So given that, that's what's going to lead us to what I saw today. So given what we're seeing here, what can you tell me? What, without me just running through this price action and, and just telling you what I saw, what can you tell me about this week's price action? Yes, they're discussed in the modules, John. If you're talking about EFXU modules, they are. And they're not, you don't need to, to use them, but the time and price one, absolutely. They're all discussed. Everything I do say, think, hear, smell is in EFXU. But what can you tell me right now about this week's price action? What are we seeing? And, and what I talk about this week's price action, it's everything on the right side of that yellow line. What can you tell me about a directional bias? So if you're seeing, here's day one, here's day two, right? This is Monday, this is Tuesday, this is Wednesday, and this is Thursday. What can you tell me about all of this week's price action? Yeah, it's retracing. Yeah, but it's bullish, right? So we have a, a bullish directional bias for the week, right? We might have a long-term bearish direction, but this week we have a bullish directional bias, right? So if I delete these and we come up into the price action that we saw today leading up to London, right? So we were right around here, okay? So what can you tell me? If you're looking at this, okay, we can see some pretty significant things, okay? One, we can see a signature pattern here. We can see a strong run down capturing these lows here, then a strong push up above this high. Price came back down and retested in this area and then gave that continuation move here. This would have been a spot here that I looked at for Asian, right? We can see an Asian run that led into London session, typically you'll see a retracement come down for the New York London overlap and test into that. That would have been an entry for me right there had it pulled down to it. That would have been an entry. So we have that. This would have been a play in here, right? So what are we seeing, right? This is what you have to train your eye for. We're seeing bullish price action in the New York and London and New York, London, and then to New York, right? Little bit of consolidation that starts to take off, bullish in London. Slight retracement, like I said, if it came down here, I would have pulled it. But again, New York or London, overlap, New York, bullish. Slight consolidation again in Asian session, London, bullish, New York, bullish, New York or the overlap, bullish, New York, end of, end of New York bullish as well, right? Then, so what are we seeing here? We're seeing bullish moves. So that's where you have to ask yourself, where's price coming to? Where's price running to? So we can see all of these highs here. And if you saw what I had marked up um, 
on the, the setup that I sent today that I missed, right? My target was this two hour candle that we've already identified. Lee pointed that out. That's where I was targeting, right? I was targeting this high here, right? Why is this high significant, right? Because we've been bullish here and every time we're bullish in the New York London overlap, we're running on what high? London high, right? So if this trend was going to continue, that would be target number one, the London high. Target number two would be this area here where Lee identified that manipulation candle, right? If, if that's a possible continuation move to the downside, we've identified this as a retracement, that's where you want to be phasing out of your positions, right? So that was the bigger target up there. So let's go back to this time frame that we were looking at, okay? So what do we have forming here? What do we have forming here? We, we are identified our weekly directional bias. We've identified what's been happening in London and New York, London overlap and New York all week. What do we have happen after London session and New York here? What do we have happen here? Yeah, double top, absolutely. What are retail traders doing with double tops? They're selling, right? Especially, you know, they might throw trend lines, right? They might do all these different things, right? But we know that's a double top. That's also the London high. That's also previous day high, right? So we know that's a buildup of liquidity, okay? We also are paying attention to the Asian price action. So what do we know about this Asian price action? That's also um, Asian session, typically slower. This is where we can get a buildup of liquidity. So we will have Asian low and Asian high, right? So here's Asian low. We also have relative equal lows here. Asian low. And then we had this high here, relative equal highs here, but the real Asian high was, oops, let me fix that. The real Asian high was right here. So what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll put that here, target one, target two, and then target three. So this is Asian high. This is a, this is equal highs. London high and previous day high, right? Those are three significant highs, okay? So what can you tell me about the price action leading up into Asian session, then leading into New York session? We have our directional bias. We have our targets. What are we looking for here? We're looking for one of two things. We're either looking somewhere over here where you can you know, maybe get an entry, okay? Maybe this point of interest from London, maybe somewhere in here, you can 30 minute looks okay. One hour, we don't see anything, nothing there where that would really excite me. But what did excite me today is what I saw happen after this, right? So we can also see what is this pattern here? What is this pattern here? What is this pattern here? So think about it. We have our targets. We have an equal high, London high, previous day high. We've also seen London and New York, London overlap and New York show bullish and create higher highs, higher lows all week, right? What is this pattern here? The, I, and I'm talking not just this price action here. I'm talking about this. What is this? What is this whole pattern here? What is this whole pattern here? A flag, right? What is a flag? What is this type of flag? right? Where impulsive move is what? Bullish. Where's the choppy corrective price action? This, right? That's a flag. What does that flag represent? It's a very high probability of price doing this, continuing, right? Impulsive move, a rebalance, correction, continuation. That's a flag pattern. So that also kind of supports what we're looking at here. Impulsive followed by correction, absolutely, right? So if we're looking at this and we can see, okay, here's Asian high up here. Here's some relative equal highs in Asian. So we have this and then we have this, right? That was taken. What we're basically looking for, especially when we see all these other things suggest bullish price action. What we want to see is 
when we come into London, we want to see the bottom of Asian low attacked, right? And what I mean by attacked is price pushing below there. And then afterwards, we want to see a strong reaction up like this and take the highs, right? Or start running for the highs. So if we can see price push into this low here and show a strong reaction, that is a good signal for a continuation move. So I'm going to kind of let this play for a sec. And then I'm going to lead up to the price action that I posted in the group today. I'll show you where I got my entry, right? Because a lot of people were talking about why did you end up on the 10 minute? And granted, I missed this setup. It's the, it came short. Um, if I had, I chose another, another time frame, like the five. It also happened extremely fast and then shot up for the targets within one second, literally one second. Um, but either way, that's neither here nor there. I'll show you how I landed on the time frame that I did. Um, all right, so let's let's run this price dash. So I'm going to press play, right? So right now it is 5.30 a.m. Eastern, right? So I'm typically getting on the computer between now and 6 a.m., usually right around 6 a.m. And what I'm looking for is this pattern. Oops, so that was too fast. So I apologize. So let me do this. Let me go back to the time frame I was looking at. So this was 530 when it made that low. And then when we got up to this high here, it was right around 6, 610, give or take, um, a.m. Eastern, right? So now I'm on the computer and this is what I look for. I look for patterns that look exactly like this, okay? So when I was on the 15 initially, right, that's what I saw, right? For the same reason when Lee pointed out this candle up here, remember this candle up here on the four hour? And Lee said, pay attention to that four hour. And it was all wick, just like this. This four hour candle, Lee pointed this out and it was all wick. And then when we drop down to a time frame lower, we can see, okay, now it gives us that candle. It gives us that candle pattern where we can kind of gauge and balance, we can kind of engage the full candle body and, and work in an entry, right? So when we're looking at the 15 minute, okay, like this, the only candle here that you can use is that, right? But I'm looking at this, especially um, just given how this looks, right? I mean, I guess you could use the top of this, but what I'm doing is I'm dropping time frames until I get the same result that we just saw on that four hour to two hour transition. Does that make sense? So watch the difference. All right. So here's the 15 minute time frame. Right. And again, we're watching for that pattern. So 10 minute. We see the pattern. We see that last down candle followed by an engulfing candle followed by a push up. Right. That's how I landed on the 10 minute. Okay. And then also, I can drop lower too. We had a little bit of imbalance down there as well. So this is the range, okay? We can see 71, 78. We also had that three minute. And, I, and, I, and yes, I was looking low, right? I was looking tight. Um, had I sacrificed some of the risk to reward, you know, things could have been a little bit different today, but you know, sometimes you just miss really nice setups and, and, and it was just the case. So we can see the three minute and the 10 minute are basically aligned, right? We also know that is right in the kill zone, right? So that's right kind of like in the sweet spot between the 786 and the 886. So that's where I did this. I put my entry here. That's where I was looking for. Okay. Stop loss on the bottom of that. So it was around a four pitch stop loss. So we know we have these equal highs now here. We have these equal highs here, relative equal highs here. We have Asian high here. We have previous day high, London high, equal highs up here. And then the two hour candle up here. So if you saw what I posted today, it was just like this, right? So mine wasn't that high. I was playing the fibs off of this move here into the um, extension levels. You can see where I posted it, um, where I put my TP. It was right around like a 15 to one that I missed. So it was somewhere right around this ballpark here, but all the way to the top, right? Just to show you the power of this and the accuracy, 
That's a 91.7 pip stop loss, or excuse me, four pip stop loss, nine, 91.7 pip target, and a 23 risk to reward, right? So one to 23 risk to reward, okay? So I was right around here, like 15 and change. Either way, it's regardless. So that's how I came up with my entry. That's, I know a lot of you asked me how I landed on the 10 minute versus like the 15 minute or whatever it might be. Um, you know, had I really kind of dove in a little bit deeper, um, you know, we did have this five minute here, right? Um, and, and this was kind of my reason for not taking the five minute. Can anybody tell me why? Two reasons, really. Here's the five minute candle here. Now, yes, had I taken the five, it probably would have been a different result. But can you tell me what, what were some of the reasons that um, you might be able to come up with looking at this price action, why I didn't take it? Why I landed on the 10 instead of the five? And it's two reasons. No, it has nothing to do with the size of your account. It would be the risk. 1% is 1%. 2% is 2%. Now, maybe 2% might not get filled. That, that would depend on your leverage, not the account size, really, because you can get stopped out of getting into small accounts. I, I get stopped sometimes getting into trades um, on multiple six-figure accounts that are, are small. But we're talking about um, leverage. That's a leverage thing, not a stop-loss size thing in most cases. And what you can do is just drop your risk down 1%, but most people aren't going to have an issue there. Most of my entries are in this ballpark. But my seven-figure accounts, we don't have issues like this. We, we have, um, it's a little bit different. Yeah, so the other entry had engulfing. That's, that's the first one, Tracy. That's good. What, what else? There's one more thing. Yeah, Nick got it. It's not in the kill zone, right? So when we talk about the kill zone, that's really good recognition, both of you. That's good awareness, okay? So here's the kill zone, 71, 78, okay? There's a little bit of imbalance in here too, okay? And then we don't have that candle pattern, right? So we can see this candle higher than the up candle. So, you know, if we go to the 10 minute, there's the pattern right there. So I kind of went with this one, um, you know, in a lot of cases like this, working with time frames like this, I usually don't get too picky. Um, you know, if it's something that might be a little bit more risk to it or whatever it might be, um, sometimes I'll load up 1% for this reason that if it were to kind of come down like this and come short of my entry, um, I'll, I'll be perfectly okay. And a lot, or, you know, if it comes this here, I'm not looking for perfect entries all the time on, on these lower time frames. Um, today was just a situation where it was GBP news right around, um, the leading up to New York Open, the overlap, and it literally did this, boom, boom, in one candle, like literally one candle instantly within one second. Um, so it was it would have been really hard to get to pull the trigger on that first off, and then second, even if you had a pending on the five minute, there was a good chance that it happened so fast that you probably wouldn't have got filled. And and sometimes that's just a, a you know the situation. Um, when you when you when you're playing on lower time frames, all right. So I'm gonna run this, and we can look at the price action. But either way, you know, uh, there there's so much more that we can take out of this, right? Being able to find directional bias, right? Finding our targets, finding our entry points of interest, and we're talking about a um, sporadic parabolic move from a red folder news event that was um that myself and, and many of you posted it like that was the the awesome part of this many of you posted that you were looking at it posted your charts posted your markups and a lot of you posted um your 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 profits that you also caught it so we're talking about extreme accuracy where a lot of inexperienced traders and myself at the time when i saw crazy news events where price looked like it was slamming one way and then the other way, and then maybe back and forth a couple you know, times before it runs. What do we refer to that as? We, refer, we, we call it whipsawing, right? And we think there's no rhyme or reason or accuracy or precision to it. And then we think it's a stop hunt or you know, whatever it might be. But in reality, they're, they're, it's engineered. 
and you can have extreme accuracy on it, which many of you were able to mark up and execute today, which is amazing. So I'm going to press play on this and we're going to walk through this price action. And then this is what we led up to. Okay. So here's play. So right now we're nearing like 630. So this candle here, 640 ish. Okay. So price started to kind of just flag. It pushed up a little there. So now we have our signature pattern, right? We have the low is taken and now we have price pushing up here. Okay. So fibs get a little bit adjusted now. Okay. We can just move those out of the way for right now as we're walking through the price action. So press play. Okay. That was the news event. So you guys see how fast that was? You guys see how fast that was? And let me do one more thing too. Let me do one more thing too. Let me pull up my broker. Seven minute would have worked. Well, here's the thing that I'm, that I'm pulling up. On my broker, this wick wasn't here. This wick didn't come as far down as we're seeing here. And, and also too, right? So let me, let me show you something too. And, and sometimes it can be funny like this. Because if you look at the Facebook group, right? If you look at the snapshot, did anybody recognize the snapshot that I sent in the Facebook group? Um, let me see. Forex trading made easy. Yeah, so yours didn't either. Yeah, so sometimes, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, trading view switches up its price action. So we just saw it here. So watch this. Um, let me see if I can find what I posted in this group today. Um, let's see. All right, there it is. Okay. So this is what I posted today. So you can see it's GBP 10 minute and look at that wick. Look at that wick. But look at GU now. That wick showed it came into it. That, that was not there. That did not come into this. And on my broker, it's the same way. Yeah, it had a shorter wick. So sometimes they're, they're sneaky like this. Sometimes they're really sneaky like this. Let me get out of replay mode and try something. And, and look at that right there. It just switched. It just switched. It just went back. How crazy is that? It just went back. It just went back. That's funny. How funny is that? But like sometimes you'll see that when price action happens that fast. So look at this. This was a one minute candle here. Look at this. That was a one minute candle. It literally, so like somebody was like, oh, you know, why didn't you just pull the trigger? That's why. Like this literally came down here and shot up to this high within five seconds. Five seconds, five seconds. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't always happen like that. that this was just a, a kind of a, a freak event, you know, just really fast price action with the news event. Um, you know, it is what it is, you know, but more th there's a lot of good takeaways out of this, right? I mean, look at this type of risk reward. I mean, this thing cruised right through the TP here. You can see here's my initial markup that I sent. Instant 1 to 15 entry miss GBP news pain, right? Um, you know, it was just <laughs> super fast and it would have been a huge huge trade um ended up shooting almost to the two hour it did an instant one to 21 right i mean the, risking two percent you're talking 42 ish percent which is pretty wild um but yeah sometimes trading view can just be weird like that sometimes broker feeds are all different right so like my broker feeds on both accounts my ftmo accounts um my live FTMO, my new challenge that I just started for 200K, and then my seven-figure account brokers, none of them showed the wick coming close. Um, but you can see here the five-minute. The five-minute ended up trading into it. But, you know, it is what it is. Had this price action come down into this point of interest here, not super fast and flash out like this, um, I would have been okay pulling the trigger on that. Um, had I pulled the trigger on that price action coming down as it was popping out, I probably would have got filled somewhere up here. I probably would have got filled somewhere up higher, um, just because of how fast it was.
But that's kind of the walkthrough. I mean, like there, there's regardless if the trade got filled or, you know, where if it came short of the entry that I had identified, it is what it is, right? More or less, like it's being able to identify this, right? Especially with time, right? The, the news events, because I know if I'm able to accurately do this, most situations I'm not missing in, most situations my entries aren't getting slammed like this with news events, right? And, and just the accuracy and the precision that you can have, right? And you don't need to be winning all of your trades to, to do this profitably. I mean, you can do this, um, you know, and, and be wrong more times than you're right and still produce profits, right? Even with a third of this type of risk to reward, even if you're averaging one to five risk to rewards, right? You're talking about 18% win rate would still be profitable, let alone if you're playing in the, the 40 to 50 to 60% win rate area, then you're talking extremely profitable. Then if you even increase that to, you know, seven to one averages, eight to one averages, right? This was a 15 to one average, right? So, I mean, had I hit this trade at 2% risk, we're talking about 30% gain instantly, right? So it's just, it's just to me, it's, it's, it's wild where, the background where myself and most of us came from, from a retail standpoint, where entries were very subjective. They were basically general areas of support and resistance and trend lines and stop losses in targets were also general areas, right? What are we usually targeting in the, in the, in the retail world of strategies? Other support resistance areas, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, same thing with uh, stop losses. What are stop losses? Uh, where are they being placed? How many 15, 1 to 15s or 1 to 10s or 1 to 5s for under 100 pips are you getting with retail strategies, right? Stop losses are usually other highs or lows or support or resistance, kind of real no um, rhyme or reason to it. This is accuracy. This is accuracy. This is precision, not only with entry points of interest, but targets and more so with news events. So this stuff can be extremely powerful if you really dedicate the time to put into this stuff um, and it can change your life for sure. So does anybody have any questions about the price action that we just kind of went through? So that was kind of the reasoning for what I was looking at today. Um, yes, I missed this trade, you know, it is what it is. It didn't upset me. I, I know I'll find another one tomorrow. And I have, you know, the whole year to look for setup. So yes, I, I'm more happy that I was able to identify and that my directional bias was correct and where I believe price to go from my points of interest, my point A to point B was accurate, right? I know in most cases I'm in these trades. So I'm happy with the result, even though I didn't get into the trade. Um, so we discussed my reasoning for why I looked at this, why I was targeting what I was targeting, why I chose the entry spots that I did, um, and then what we're looking at um, for future price action, right? So we talked about that two hour quick recap. We talked about the higher time frame structure. We talked about we have this previous week low. We have previous day low now as well, right? So this high was taken. So now we have this previous day low, previous day low here, right? Target. And then we also have this previous week low here. So I can type that out, previous week low. We have this previous day low here. We can take this out of here. And then we have the higher time frame low down here, which is, this is equal lows plus, December 2021 low, okay? So we have short-term targets in alignment with higher time frame targets. Um, would the two hour put you off because of the equals? No. I see manipulation. But, you know, it, it all depends on, you know, many different factors, man. You should know this, right? What's your current risk to reward? I mean, what's your current PL, right? We're just starting a new week, right? Probably a new pay period for a lot of people. NFP week, 
right? So are you taking these candles straight up or are you looking for patterns, right? All these things are going to factor into your decision making. We're never just randomly looking at candles and be like, yes, this looks good. I'm going to take this or I'm just going to randomly look for a pattern here, right? What's the reasoning for doing what you're doing, right? What week is it? What time of the week is it? What time of the month is it? When do you get paid? Are you So are you coming on a new pay period? Are you coming into NFP with 5% gains? Are you coming into NFP with negative 5%, right? All of these things dictate your actions, right? So, you know, most cases like this, you probably want to look for a pattern, right? So that's all we can look for. We have our point of interest. We have our short-term targets in alignment with our higher time frame targets. So basically what we want to see is what we can get developing between agent session and see if we can get some bearish manipulation, bearish impulsive price action. Basically what we talked about here with this manipulation to the downside that ran for the top side. Maybe we'll get something like this, Asian, London, boom, boom, right? Take the high, strong move down in London, take an Asian low, right? Give us a nice signature pattern in a logical area and then run for this, right? Will we get that? I don't know. We'll just have to see, you know? And, and if you're feeling like you're in a good position, you're liking the setup, whatever your trade plan might say, you know, slap a sell limit on this. But you slapping a sell limit on this, right? What's your risk to reward, right? If it's, you know, um, you know, five to one plus for bigger targets, you got to also recognize, right, time of the week. Why is that important, right? Because if you're targeting down here for that to be worth it for you, is that going to happen in Friday? Most likely not. That's probably going to take a week, right? So you got to factor that stuff in. That being the case, it might be in your best interest to wait for price to break down and start showing bearish manipulation, right? There's going to be, if this starts breaking down, there'll be plenty of opportunity to get in. You don't always have to catch the first one or the highest one or the lowest one, right? It's just having the patience and knowing what you want to see, when you want to see it. And following your plan. I mean, that, at the end of the day, that's what makes a professional trader. It's you're building a profitable trade plan that can prove profitability over a larger sample size. And, and, that, and that interprets into um, having a positive trade expectancy, right? And then it becomes about your ability to implement that plan consistently over the long run. That's all it is. That's all it comes down to. Um, so we're about, about an hour in now. Um, what we'll do is go through any questions. Um, if you have any questions about... Anything really, uh, it can be about uh, what we just covered today, any of that price action. Um, if you have anything you want to talk about, ask me. Um, we'll hang out for the next five or so minutes and then we'll wrap it up. And then if um, if you guys are in the EFX U group, which I know a lot of you are, because I can see a lot of people watching, um, we have the live trading for the NFP event tomorrow. Um, could you look, yeah. So what I just described is that double tap. Scott, love how they closed the imbalance. Did you get in on the retrace? No, so I, I wanted that first one. After, so why do you think I say that? Why do you think I wanted the first one and I didn't go for the second one? Jorge, if you had to take a stab at it, why do you think I wanted the first one? And then when it came back down to retest and fill that imbalance, why do you think I, I left that one alone? And this is important. Take a stab at it. You got to take a guess. Not the risk to reward. I mean, the risk to reward was a part of it. But what, what was something that was eliminated? That the first one had that the second one didn't? Yeah, time, that's part of it. But what else? What, what's the most important thing that you need on a setup? Yeah, it took my targets, right? Tim, Tim said it spot on. The first move took my targets, right? So we didn't have any other targets after that. I mean, maybe the high that it just made, but, you know, that was just a quick move up. So I'm, you know, I'm sure they were sellers up there, but, you know, I, I wanted those targets, you know. For me, I can have beautiful setups all day long, but if I don't have my targets, and, and I, need a, I need a combination of targets, right? I need a strong confluence of targets. And what I mean by that, if you look at that high, right? We had a double top, that double top, was also previous day high. 
in addition to those two things was also London high, right? So just those three things there. And then right below that, we had Asian high, right? Like that, that's just, you know, all, the only thing we're missing there is, you know, previous week high. You know what I mean? Like that, that, that's as strong as it gets. That strong move up, right? Like that was the move that I was looking for, um, especially with the news event, right? I mean, that's why we were looking at that pair. We, we were aware of it, that's, that's where you can use time and price, right? Like when people talk about news events, right? If you see a red folded news event for GU and then you see patterns like that set up right before the news event, you, you kind of have an idea of what's happening. That's why I pay attention to like, EU, GU, and gold for NFP, right? I'm looking for the same patterns and I'm looking to see if we can get something similar to that with the news events. So yeah, a good set of confluence, absolutely. So <clears throat> and, 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 you know, that's not to say that setup wouldn't work. You know, I mean, I think it did, but it, it still really hasn't exceeded those highs. After that move and after that retest, I mean, I think it might be running maybe three to one. And it's kind of just like hanging a bang in there now. It's not really doing much. It's probably just kind of building liquidity, which we kind of want to see. If we can just have it move sideways for the rest of the day in, into Asian session, and then we can come into London session. And maybe we can see like a strong push up, take the highs into the two hour and then just sink. We know exactly what we're looking for tomorrow, but, you know, maybe we might see, um, you know, maybe we might see the same thing happen and it slams down and then takes the high. That would be an indication of it maybe going higher. So we'll just have to see. It's a higher risk, risk trade at this point. Yeah, for sure. hundred percent. That too. The bullet kind of got shot, you know, it's kind of like missing your entry and then you know, using another bullet when uh, the target was already hit. So um, any other questions? I don't want to um, keep us on here. If, um, I know you guys don't want to just be looking at me and hearing my voice. So if we have any questions, we can run through some of those. If not, then we can just call it a session. Um, and, and I apologize. We'll be back on the normal schedule for next week, next Tuesday. Um, it's just been pretty hectic this week and uh, Emma being sick and just a lot going on in my computer. Is, I think it's about to. I think it's about to go. It's been a good run, but I think my computer's about to go. So, um, and then I'll see a lot of you tomorrow morning anyway, seven thirty. We have a lot of stuff going on for tomorrow. All right. Well, I don't see any other questions, so we can just call it there. So, um. I hope you enjoyed the session. I hope you got some value from this. Um, we can definitely keep tabs. So if, if I see anything happening for, for GU, um, you know, maybe we can, we can, I can post a, I can post a, a chart and we can kind of follow up on it for the next session. Um, for NFP, are we going to focus on GU? It, it really, so, I mean, I just focus on my, my two pairs primarily and I, I focus on US 30 and gold and then I watch EU and GU. So, um, for tomorrow, the NFP live session, it's basically, we're going to see which one, you know, has a pattern. Um, if we have a, if we have a pattern on one of them, I mean, it just depends, you know, um, if we can get what I just described on GU, we'll definitely be looking at GU. Maybe we can see something on, uh, we have a couple of things setting up on gold. I can kind of see, like, we just saw a run down on gold today and it's pushing up last time I checked. So there's kind of like a signature pattern if you go on like gold 15 minute now. So there's a good chance that we could have something similar. I'd like to see gold go up. I mean, we got we got some highs. We got some equal highs up there. We got some good targets up there. And it's it's been showing bearish manipulation with bullish moves. So um, it just really depends on what we see for tomorrow. So we, we just won't know until I wake up and, and see what happens. So, but we'll see. Um, other than that, I hope you guys got value from this. Um, you know, we talked about a lot of different stuff. So maybe if we see something tomorrow, I can give it a, I, I can drop a chart. Um, and then we can come back and review that chart. Um, I'm not sure what we have planned. We're, Mirko and I, we're working on a new schedule, content schedule for this group specifically. Um, and he's going to be helping me with a lot of stuff too. Um, you know, a lot of you have been requesting some like the favorited videos from the discord. So he's going to be working on taking some of that stuff and, and kind of doing some editing and working on some of that stuff that we can 
implemented here as well. So uh, maybe if we do something like that, we can revisit the chart on uh, on Tuesday. So um, other than that, EFXU members, I'll see you all tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. Eastern. And then we have back-to-back -back sessions. We have another one at 11. Um, we're doing the review markup session. Other than that, FTME members, I will see you all next Tuesday at 12 p.m. for sure this time. Uh, no, no conflict of uh, interest right there with schedules or anything like that. So um, other than that, if I don't see you uh, tomorrow, have a good weekend. Stay safe. Keep grinding. Stay consistent. And you'll achieve those goals. I promise you. That's all it is. Just consistency. That's it. Discipline and consistency and working on creating positive, successful habits. That's it. That's all it is. And systemizing your life. That's like the biggest tips I can give you systemize things right you guys want to before i go you guys want to know one of the biggest hacks for consistency who here struggles with consistency i'll, I'll leave you guys with a nugget real quick on what i do uh, i'll leave you with a quick little tip who here struggles with consistency and maybe discipline maybe it's kind of like a, a combination of the both right if you if you're maybe if, if i see enough ones in the chat i'll tell you what i do do you struggle with being consistent and disciplined, right? Like doing certain things that you need to be doing every single day, drop a one. If you do, I'll, I'll tell you what I do. I'll tell you what I do. I'll tell you what I do. I'll tell you what myself, Bogdan, Joe, and just about everybody in my inner circle, what we do. Because there's... A couple of components. EFX, you members, I mean, you guys got training on this coming up in week eight, but I'm going to leave you guys with a little, a little hack, but I do. And if you do this and you take it serious, um, it will change your life. I promise you. Who here, you, who here um, has a calendar that they use for like everyday stuff, right? Like, I mean, you have a calendar on your phone where you know, you got events, reminders, and tasks, and things like that. Anybody here use a calendar? Anybody here just use a calendar for your everyday stuff? Like, you know, you got, my daughter's got ballet on Thursday at 8.30, or whatever it might be. Anybody here have a calendar? Like, you use a calendar? Okay, so this is what you need to do. Who here also has, like, an accountability partner or, you know, maybe some type of partner, like, that you're on this trading journey with or entrepreneur journey with, right? So, like, if you're an EFXU, you're required to have an accountability partner. Like, it's one of the things that I tell every student in that group, you need to have a trading slash accountability partner. And it's not something like, hey, man, what are you looking at in the morning? You got any setups you're looking at? It's more so for the accountability, right? So, this is what I do. Google Calendar is going to change your life, right? Why is that? Google Calendar connects to your, I'll show you. Google Calendar, right, connects to, so your Gmail account, right? Your Google Docs, your, um, your G Drive, um, your Google Calendar, your Gmail account, all of these things are interconnected, right? Um, if you don't have one, just Go sign up for gmail.com, right? Most people have a Gmail account. What you can do is you download the apps for all of these. So let me show you. So you can see here, um, right? You got your Gmail. I don't know if I can get it. Whatever. So you got the Drive, Google Drive. You got the, um, and I'll show you why this is important, right? So here's the most important one, the Google Calendar. You can pull up the Google Calendar on your computer, right? You can have that there. Um, and then what you do is you link it to your phone. And then you can link this to your, so I have my phone. I have my watch, my Apple Watch, right? All connected with my Google Calendar, my Google everything. Just like I have the Google Nest Hub in my bedroom and I have the Alexa here, right? They're all interconnected. And the reason for that is, let me load up my calendar. And this is what I do every single day to, like basically what I'm talking about here is systemizing, right? The most successful people that I've personally learned from, and we have mentors who make, Sam Ovens, for example, he's one of our mentors for our business. Um, this guy makes $30 million a year, or excuse me, 30, his business was making like 30 million a month. Um, Cole Gordon. 
He's one of our other mentors. His company, um, Seven Mile and Remote Closers, they average five million a month, right? These guys are crazy, crazy like entrepreneurs, high, high level, like just insane, right? And their biggest thing is systemizing, right? Systemizing everything, right? So this is the hack that I learned from them. And what you do, I'm gonna load it up for you. I'm gonna show you. Everything that you do in a day that, or that you wanna do, right? You systemize it. And what I mean by that is everything I do in my life is on my calendar, right? And then I'll show you how I take it a step further. So I have my calendar on my computer, right? I get my alerts on my phone and on my, my watch and all these other gadgets I have. So the first thing I see every day when I come in is my calendar. And then I have everything on repeat. And I'm talking everything from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, when I eat breakfast, when I go to the gym, my morning huddles, right? So I wake up five, six, or, or five, or I guess it's 4.30 to five. I do my morning routine all in the calendar. Then at six, I'm on the computer trading. I'm doing my thing there. Right at 10, I have my morning huddle. And that's our team, everybody involved in our team. Um, we meet up every morning at 10 a.m. That's 10 to 10.15, right? Then at 10.15 to 10.45, that's where I exercise. And then I have my clothes for my, my working out, right? Right there next to me. So I, I know it's right there. It's all ready, right? All of that stuff. Lunch at noon, right? All of this stuff, right? It, it's all scheduled, okay? But here's what you do if you, if you lack consistency or if you lack discipline, right? I get alerts for every single thing at noon. And then it gets to a point where like you don't even need your schedule, or you don't need these alerts. So like my body, I don't need an alarm anymore. My body, I go to sleep at the same time every single night. I wake up at the same time every single morning. So I don't need an alarm clock. Most times I'm beating my alarm clock. So let me show you the Google Calendar. And what you do is you, you can color code it all, right? So certain things will be tasks, like, right? So here was like the overlap thing that I had on my calendar today. That was one of my meetings at noon with my... Um, my account, my account manager. So you can see workout, exercise, 10, 15, uh, morning huddle, 10 to 10, 30, lunch, 12, post to FTME group, 12 p.m., um, meet with Brian, 12 to 12, 45, right? All of these things, right, are, are listed, right? It's all there every single day. I get alerts for every single thing on my calendar. 15 to 30 minutes before. And then a lot of these things I just have on repeat. I have them repeat for every day or every week or every month, right? Whatever it might be, right? But here's the catch. This Google Calendar, does anybody use Google Calendar? Right now, I mean, there, there's so many features and so many things that you can do with Google Calendar and just Google in general, right? So what we do, is we share all our calendars. That means Joe and Bogdan, we can pull each other's calendars up at any time, right? Katie has access to my calendar. So we have certain, like, it's, it's and the reason why we do that, it's two things. One, we know when everybody's doing this, right? If Katie wants to, you know, we go on vacation, we try to do that every quarter, right? And we have certain times and days right? We have certain times of the day that it's our time or family time. So she's never wondering, oh, you know, when is, when is, when can I do this with Danny? Or when can I talk to Danny? Or I wonder what Danny's doing. She just knows. When do I wake up? 5.30 in the morning, 5, 5.30 in the morning. When do I go to sleep? I go to sleep at nine every night. When am I in bed? Eight every night, right? Like everybody just knows. Joe's schedule, I can pull it up. Bogdan's schedule, I can pull it up. They can see my schedule. If something isn't getting done and it's on the schedule, we have alerts and we're all interconnected. So, you know, if I have something scheduled and it doesn't happen, guess who I hear from? I hear from my team saying, this was scheduled. Why didn't you do it? Right? So I'm sharing everything, letting everybody know my availability and what I have going on every single day and that we're also sharing and interconnecting our calendars. So if something doesn't get done, right? Because we also have it tied to like things like Asana, right? Where it's like checklists and to-do lists. 
So it's like, Danny has to do this. Joe has a meeting with this person, or we have a deadline for X, Y, and Z on this day. And then it sends reminders to the group for everybody that this is due or this is coming up. And then it will say this is completed so that we can go back and we can see what was completed and what wasn't completed. Does that make sense? So that's how we are ruthlessly consistent and disciplined because we have every single thing scheduled. I mark out my charts the same time every single day. I eat lunch the same time every single day. I work on self-development the same time every single day. I meditate at the same time every single single day. And it's on my calendar. And I have reminders 30 minutes before I do every single thing every single day. And it's all linked to everybody on my team and Katie's calendars. So that's how you should do it. If you're serious about this, in, in EFX, you members, there's a module in week eight that is designed for systemizing. It shows you how to systemize your trading. It shows you how to systemize your life. And it, I go into this in crazy detail and how over the top I've systemized everything in my life. And, and that's where you generate efficiency um, and effectiveness, consistency and discipline, right? And most importantly, accountability, right? If I just had my list, of stuff to do. And I was just getting on my alerts and say, Hey, Danny, you have a meeting at 12, um, you know, with Brian, you also have a meeting with, you know, you, you're streaming live into the group at 12, 15, whatever it might be. And I just get my alerts. I can easily just dismiss that shit. But when I have accountability and consequences, if I don't pull my end, right. I hear from it. My team messages me. We, we, that's why we have morning huddles, right? That's another part that we do. Right. So every single morning, right. If you see on my schedule, hold on, I'll pull it up real quick. Every single morning in my calendar at 10 a.m., right. That is designated for the team. Um, let me see. Uh, right. So give me a second here. I got two calendars. So you can see, like, right here. Let me pull it up. Right, so you can see daily leadership huddle, Friday, 10 to 10, 15, workout, blah, 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 Q&A session with EFX at 11 a.m., uh, right? So like it's all there, same time every day. That 10 a.m. meeting that we have between, for the team, guess what we're discussing on that call? If you had to take a guess, what do you think we discuss on that 10 a.m. call every single day? What do you think we talk about at 10 a.m. on that call every single week? And we do it five days a week, but just recently we started doing seven days a week. Why do we do that even on Saturday and Sunday right now? Because we have massive frigging goals and we're going to accomplish that. So if that means us going harder than normal right now, you know, it is what it is. But guess what we do with that 10 a.m. meeting? We talk about what each and every single one of us is doing. Yeah, daily method of operation. We talk about, you know, we have an idea of our general schedules, but sometimes there's, you know, random doctor's appointments for Emma or, you know, something new that gets scheduled or whatever it might be. So what we're discussing every single day at 10 a.m. is what we have going on for the day for the, each of us, what we have due by the end of the week, what we have due at the end of the month, right? Any deadlines that we have coming up, anything that we need to pull more team members or resources to, to get finished or, you know, whatever it is, because we have a, a pretty big team now. We work with a lot of different companies and there's just a lot going on. Every single company that we work with also does exactly this. We're all on the same page. We all hold each other accountable, right? And we discuss what we have going on every single day. So if you lack consistency, if you're not accomplishing your goals, right, consistently as well, start getting on Google Calendar. Link it up with your accountability partner. Meet every single day at a set time and be like, hey, listen, this is what I'm working on. This is what I've accomplished. This is what I'm going to do by the end of Friday. This is what I'm going to do by the end of the month, right? I'm going to set these deadlines. And then every single day that you meet up at 10 a.m., you can discuss your progress or explain why you didn't do what you're doing or whatever it might be. That, my friends, is how you develop successful behaviors, success habits, and build consistency. And what happens when you do this, it gets to a point where 
if we don't do it or if we miss something, it starts feeling uncomfortable because it's become such a habit. It's become, this is how you build routines, right? And if it has to start like that, then it has to start like that. But at least it's, you know, you're being held accountable and you're being organized and it's being alerted of what you have to do when you have to do it every single day. And, and that's just what we do. And, you know, if you've been around us for any amount of time that you know that we're all pretty, you know, we're, we're all very consistent. We're all very disciplined and, and we get shit done. So. But I thought I'd share with that with you. I know we're, we're going a little past, but I, I thought I'd just drop that for you guys. So um, I would recommend doing it. How many of you are actually going to take that and run with it? I guess it really determines, I guess it really depends on how bad you want to accomplish your goals. But that's what we do. That's what many of our high level, big time successful entrepreneur mentors do. Um, and it's just proven to be extremely effective, extremely effective. Um, so other than that, I'm going to leave you guys with that. Do what you want with it. EFXU members, um, I know a lot of you aren't at week eight yet, but week eight, we dive into all of that stuff, systemizing everything big, big time. So um, you guys have that to look forward to. Um, other than that, hope you guys all have a great day. EFXU members, I'll see you all tomorrow. Everybody else, see you next week. Have a good weekend and um, talk to you all soon.